This is a presentation which will briefly go over the properties of flow and Markov matrices in land change science. My name is Michael Cecil. I'm a graduate student at Clark University in Geographic Information Science. To start, we're going to go over a few slides that just go over the basics of what flow and Markov matrices are. So, this is a transition matrix. This comes from the Plum Island ecosystem. There's four categories, built for its wet and other. Uh, the time points are 1991 to 1999, so that's an eight-year time interval. And these numbers just represent pixels, uh, or cells, that are transitioning from one category to another in that eight-year time period. So, to calculate the Markov matrix, uh, which is one way of calculating land change. Basically, we're going to take this transition matrix and just divide for each cell. We're going to divide it by the sum of the rows in that cell. This is what we ultimately get. And these percentages you see here are percentages representing the likelihood that a given category will transition to another category during that time frame. So, for example, there's a 98.2% chance that um, a cell that was built at the beginning of the time interval will remain as built, and a 1.7% chance that a built cell will transition to forest. So, Markov matrices really deal a lot with probabilities and looking at the likelihood that uh, different categories will transition. So we can take a different approach with this transition matrix and not look at probabilities, but look at simply how much of a, how large are these transitions uh, and extrapolate that process linearly. And that's what we do with a flow matrix. So to calculate the flow matrix, uh, there's a few more steps. Um, first, you divide each cell by the sum of all cells, which just gives you the relative importance of that transition. So if 50% of all of your cells began as built and ended as built, um, that transition represents 50% of your landscape. Yeah, step two, we want to annualize that. So we divide by the number of years in the time interval. In this case, that's eight. Uh, step three is we eliminate the diagonal entries. Uh, we're not interested in what's called persistence, which is when the category remains the when a cell remains in the same category, we're looking for transitions between categories. And finally, we can convert to appropriate units. So a nice benefit of flow matrices is that we can view them in terms of square kilometers, hectares, percent of the study area, um, any different appropriate uh, land area unit. And so this is our result. So you can see the label on the right, it says square kilometers transitioning annually. So for example, transitioning from built to forest, we have 0 0.97 uh, square kilometers transitioning annually. Okay, and so the goal of the script I wrote and of this presentation is to take these two different approaches, the Markov and the flow approaches and to predict how land cover will change using each of those models. And so I'll show a couple of charts on that right here. So this is the Markov chart and um, what's going on here at the beginning in 1999 is the land cover distribution uh, for the land cover data in 1999. And all of the steps in the future are what's called a Markov model. They're Markov steps. So we take, for each of these eight year periods, we take those likelihoods, we calculate the Markov matrix, and we say, if we started here and we apply those likelihoods, where will it go? And then if we apply those likelihoods again in 2007, what will our land change look? And we continue to do that. And so what eventually happens under the Markov uh, land change modeling is it reaches an equilibrium. Uh, and that is what we have here at the very end. It's a hypothetical state. You don't actually get completely there. Um, but, you know, you can see it looks around like 70% built, 
maybe 25% forest, a few percent wet, 1% other, something like that. And so what the script we're going to go over actually calculates is, it calculates these steps, it calculates the equilibrium, or the goal almost, so to speak, and it calculates how, long, how many of those steps will it take until we're really close to that equilibrium. And really close actually just represents within 1% of the total land area for each category. So this difference in the red should be less than 1%, and the greens, and the blues, and the yellows, they should all be less than 1%. And in this case, that actually happened in 3031. For the flow matrix, everything's happening linearly, and just a more direct process, I think simpler to understand. Uh, we calculated how many square kilometers we're transitioning annually between the different categories, and we just extrapolate that into the future. So we don't need to have discrete time steps the way we do with uh, the Markov model. We can have any period time step. And the flow model just continues until one of the categories is completely exhausted. In this case, that's the other category. And that happens in 2059. And when that happens, we just look at the percentages we have left over. So a little less than 60% built, maybe 25% forest, and the rest about 15% is wet. And again, 0% other. So uh, in the script calculates these rates of change. Um, this end date, we call the extinction date, and the final proportions under the flow matrix. So let's take a look at this script. Here it is, this Markov and flow script. And so it takes as an input a CSV file, transition matrix.csv, and it's going to output another transition file. So before we run it, let's look at this input transition matrix file and just look at its format as a particular format. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. So you see this first line just has the number of categories, four, in the first entry. This is a little easier to view in Excel. Unfortunately, I don't have Excel on this computer. Um, the second line has the start and end dates. The third line has the four categories. And then from the fourth line on, you have the transition matrix itself. So that's just... Again, the rows represent the earlier time date, 1991, and the columns represent the latter time date, 1999. And they just represent the number of cells that are transitioning from one uh, category to another. So in this case, 504,079 cells are transitioning from built to built. 8,550 8, are transitioning from built to forest, etc. So to run the script, this is uh, in Python, so you just need a Python installed on your computer and a particular library called NumPy, which performs some of the linear algebra calculations. And it's down here. Um, you want to make sure this folder path variable is pointing to where that transition matrix.csv file is. And just, as usual, Make sure you have the appropriate libra libraries, in particular NumPy. So you just go to run, run module. Doesn't take too long, maybe about 30 seconds or so. You can see the matrix output.csv file is already there. Just want to double check, it looks like our script is completed. So we open this. And there's a lot of information in here. So, again, it's a little easier to view in Excel, but the information we have are uh, some header categories, just saying the number of categories, the start year, the end year, the time interval, the names of the categories. The initial land cover distribution, so at the end of the time period, 1999, the percentages of each of the categories. The Markov matrix, which is the probability matrix of transitioning between categories. Then we have these Markov steps. That's right here. So it's as you go through and iterate with the Markov process, how are the percentages of the categories changing? And we have the equilibrium at the very end. 
and the step just before equilibrium is when uh, is the Markov step where the land changes within 1% for each category, within 1% of equilibrium. Then again, that happens in 3031 at the 129th Markov step. And then the flow matrix calculations. So this is the flow matrix. Uh, this is the annual net change under the flow matrix for the four categories. So again, the order is built, forest, wet, other. So built, we can see, has a positive annual net change, and the other three categories have negative. They're all pretty small. Again, because we're dealing, these are annualized, so it's representing the proportion of the total land area that is changing annually, pot that is gaining or negative or, or losing for each category. Uh, so they're pretty small, but over time they add up. And similar to the Markov steps, we have flow steps. Now, a nice property about the flow matrix is that you can actually do it for any time length. Uh, but we keep them at the, as the same size of the Markov step because that's a, an easy comparison. And so we go through seven flow steps. And then this final flow step, we see the end state when one of the categories is zero. So these four entries represent the proportions of the four categories. So it looks like about 61% built, 29% forest, 10% wet, and 0% other. Other is the category that was exhausted. And we just write that again, the final proportions of the flow matrix. And down here we see the year the flow matrix ends. And that's in just before 2060. So to recap, let's just look at a couple of those charts again, right here. This is the Markov chart. So uh, we calculate these different Markov steps. We calculate the equilibrium, and we calculated how long it took, how how long, and how many of those steps it takes to get within one percent of equilibrium. And then the flow chart, we calculated these rates of change. So this red is clearly positive, and these other three are actually all negative. It's clear on the yellow. For the blue and green, it's maybe a bit tougher, but the, they're actually decreasing. So this length here, this size here, is, is going to be smaller when you get to the right, to the end, because those categories are decreasing. And so we calculate the end date and the final proportions. And so this document is actually an Excel document as well. And what you can do, if you have Excel, if you're on a PC, is uh, you take your output, this matrix output.csv. You can plug it in, just sort of just paste it on the, uh, on the first worksheet, paste the output from the script, and then take these Markov steps right here and these flow steps right here and copy and paste those onto this Markov data and this flow data. So if you copy it onto the Markov data, uh, that is the data that is used to create the chart, this Markov chart, like that. Uh, you may need to adjust the number of categories and some of the colors of the categories so that it's representative. And then again, similarly, you go to down here, take your flow steps, copy and paste that to your flow data, and this is the page that is used to make this flow chart. Uh, and again, you may need to adjust that a bit. But overall, um, these are two different ways of modeling land change. They each have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, but hopefully you will find this uh, useful for your research. Uh, so I thank you for your time and wish you best of luck and good luck.